Saverino Meadarino, welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. Wanna know how I turn this farm from this? To this. Today's video is all about how I usually do my layouts in Stardew Valley and some tips and tricks I can suggest to you guys. Let's get into it. So this video topic was suggested by some of you guys in my previous video, so thank you so much for your suggestion. So I decided to start a new save with a normal farm with an empty slate. And just a little disclaimer, I did decide to use creative mode to ensure that I was able to place all the buildings in time for this video. I do have a lot of other farms that I've made pretty, so I'll show those off. And I do have some earlier ones that don't look as pretty, but I can show you how I can make your farm look pretty. So one of my main rules now when starting to make my farm look pretty is I start with basic flooring. It is so I know how much space I have for all the buildings that I want to place down. Even though the player starts with a few flooring options, Robin also sells recipes for a few other ones that are pretty cheap. I would recommend buying these to spice up your farm. Here is a comparison of the six different types of flooring available from Robin, and each of them look pretty different to the other. These compared to the other five flooring options that the player starts with, you can see the difference that they provide. So you can place these floors however you like. I started making the floors match the two exits near the farmhouse and continued the flooring out that way. I started planning on having a lot of space for crops and some space for my coop and barn. Next I decided to place down a coop, but first I placed down a silo and then I decided to place down a coop. A silo is super important if you plan on having coops and barns on your farm. I wasn't sure how I wanted to place down the coop, but I decided to just leave a row and a column for fencing and let Robin build down the coop as I planned down the space for crops. I decided to use this large space for crops by leaving a row and a column again for fencing and then prepping down my sprinklers which I started with quality sprinklers in hopes to replace them in the future with iridium sprinklers. As iridium sprinklers are a later game item, if you haven't got them yet, you can space apart your quality sprinklers to ensure that the transition from quality to iridium doesn't become a problem. I placed down a flooring piece before adding my sprinkler to add a little cute touch. I then decided to buy the grass starter recipe which will turn 10 fibers into a piece of grass to place down, not only for a space to harvest hay from my animals, but also as a decoration item. After the spacing for my sprinklers seemed about right, I decided to build down a barn. I was originally planning on having two coops and two barns, but decided against it as having one of each looked like a better idea. Next up, which I suggest everyone do, is place down a shed. Sheds can be a bit pricey earlier on, but they can save up so much space and be a great organization option. When placed down, it takes up a 7x3 space, but has an interior spacing of 11x9. It can be later upgraded to have an interior spacing of 17x12. I decided to use this little space for my first shed and decided at first I would decorate the outside area with machines. I did plan to originally use a big area for my animals so I can have two coops and two barns, but since I decided against that, I did half this area and decided to use that space below for trees that I could use tappers on. Place a row of each tree, including mahogany just for decoration. Place tree fertilizers on top of these to speed the process for their growth. This was the end result. I used stone flooring around the trees to ensure that the trees when fully grown wouldn't just randomly drop down seeds. Next up, I wanted to use this little spacing in front of the cave to do something small with it. I decided bee houses were a good idea. I first made a space for flowers as bee houses need flowers that have grown will produce that type of honey. For example, blue jazz when fully grown near a bee house will produce blue jazz honey, which will sell for a little bit more than normal wild honey. And this was the end result. I like this idea so much that I used this little extra space in front of the shed for more flowers. In a lot of my playthroughs, I needed so much wood. So I decided to use this little extra area next to the pond as a wood farming area. So I placed the wood fence to decorate the area a little bit and then placed some trees down. In a few weeks the area southwest was full of trees. I had the first few rows as tap trees. I had this little area for the extra trees to farm. Then I used this extra area southwest of my farm for tapped oak trees. I needed a lot of oak resin so I can make a lot of kegs. With all this wood I was able to build two more sheds and placed a lot of kegs in them to make my passive income. Next up is finishing the greenhouse which can either be unlocked by the pantry bundle in the community center or can be bought via the Jojo Mart program. This is the spacing the greenhouse provides which isn't much but with six iridium sprinklers you can grow 96 crops and there's also a space that's been provided for tree saplings. I found this out by accident by placing down a tree sapling 
indoors and then found out that trees can actually be grown indoors. I planted five pomegranates and five peach trees to preserve the fruits. This is how the greenhouse will look when the trees are grown and producing fruit and when all the star fruit has grown. For those taking the artisan route, this is one direction that can provide pretty good income. You can replace the star fruit with ancient fruit seed to avoid replanting your crops. Now back outside, I didn't have too many ideas for the east side of my farm, but I really wanted to keep that area open for grass. Grass, when used in a scythe, produces hay for the animals, so I would suggest making a big area like this if you're planning to have a lot of coops and a lot of barns. I also thought it looked like a really cute decorated area. By fall in that year, I decided to change the quality sprinklers into iridium sprinklers, leaving a few in the middle as quality sprinklers for some room for scarecrows. This meant I was able to plant a total of 416 crops outdoors, which meant plenty of wines to create. Then I decided to use this little area south of my crop for fish ponds. Fish ponds are great for not only producing row of that type of fish, but different types of fishes produce different types of items such as ores and minerals when they're full of fish. Place your desired fish in there and when they require an item, the pond will then reproduce and grow in capacity to a max of 10. Place the row in a preserved jar for each row for extra income. That's all I pretty much place down because I do like taking the artisan route. You can replace a lot of these items with things like more coops and barns if you want to do animal projects instead. And there are a lot of other buildings that you can place down from Robin, such as the slime hutch, but I don't like slimes, so I've decided not using that. Using fencing and flooring can be a great organization option and can make your farm look really pretty with all the different types that you can place down. These are my suggestions and these are usually when I place down in my farm. So if there's anything else you'd like to add, why not comment it down below and you'll see a comment from me. And that is all for today. Thank you so much for joining. If there's any questions you have or if there's anything else you want to add, why not comment it down below? If you want to catch me live, I'm on twitch.tv forward slash I'll see you next time, guys. Take care.